as, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows that we are made, he knows what we are made of, remembering that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He blooms like a flower of the field. When the wind passes over it, it vanishes, and then its place is no longer known. But from eternity to eternity, the Lord's faithful love is towards those who fear him, and his righteousness towards the grandchildren of those who keep his covenant, who remember to observe his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, all his angels of great strength, who do his word, obedient his command. Praise the Lord, all his armies, his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, and all the places where he rules. My soul, praise Yahweh. I want to read these two verses again. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his faithful love towards for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions for us. Father God, we are so grateful for you in this moment, God. Thank you for your unending compassion, God, your mercy for each and every one of us, for what you did on that cross at Calvary, God. You paid the ultimate price for, all, for our sins, God. And doing all that, you were thinking of us, God. You were thinking of me. Lord, we are just so grateful for you in this moment. We give you all glory and honor and praise, God. Help us to not hold anything back here in worship. Help us to just lay it all to you, God. We are here celebrating your resurrection. God, help us to do that. Help it to be a joyous moment of worship for all of us. Jesus, we lay ourselves at your feet. We give ourselves to you. Have your way in this place, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray.
what you did for us on Calvary. Thank you for dying and being risen from the dead. Lord, you did it for us. You were looking at us, Jesus, when on that cross. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
behalf of us, God. You bore all of our sin, all of our shame, all of our burden on your shoulders, God, and you died on Calvary for us and you came back, Lord, and we are so grateful for it, God. You've given us strength. You've given us purpose. You give us hope for a better future, Lord. We thank you, God, for everything. Help us to commit ourselves fully to you today as we're going to be listening to the word and spending more time in worship down the line that we feel that we can just fully pour out our hearts to you. We thank you, Jesus, for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Happy Easter to everyone. Happy Easter. Wow, this is a joyous day. No, this is a most important day in our Christian. actually goes to church and participate in a church event but I have to say today is that this is much much larger than a Super Bowl Super Bowl is nationally celebrated but Easter is celebrated hallelujah throughout the world all the Christian hallelujah uh, worship together but I know we are not just supposed to be worshiping on Easter we uh, need to have Easter every day in our life hallelujah but let's give a clap offering to our God for giving us this wonderful opportunity on this Sunday as the rest of the world is celebrating Easter together, let us also worship together and let us give him all the glory because the grave could not hold. Hallelujah. He is risen and he's alive and he's a living God who is interceding for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a joyous day. Hallelujah. The opportunity that we get to come together. In his name, to worship him is a joyous occasion in every Christian's life. Amen. It is by grace that we have this luxury, this opportunity to stand in his presence, be in his presence, unique, called by God to be in his presence. Praise God. The sin which causes not to have the grace, not to have what God has given Adam and Eve in the garden was freedom. That was taken away by the choice Adam and Eve made, which was the first sin, which caused us to die. That is the reason where Satan receive victory over us. Satan had a power over the human being. Satan played a mind game with Adam and Eve in the garden which caused Adam and Eve to sin, which gave a reason for Jesus, the only begotten Son, to come to this world. Let us turn our attention to 1 John chapter 3, verse from 4 to 10. It prescribes the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. The work that devil has started, there need to be a person who need to destroy that. And that, destroy, that person was chosen to be the Son of God, the only begotten Son, who is the way, the truth, and the life, who had no sin in him, in him, in him to come to this world to save the sinful people. Every individual that is born from Adam and Eve and toward downward has sin in us. And we need a person who had no sin in him to come and save us. Let us read chapter 3, verse 4 to 10. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. 
but you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sin. And in him, there is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil. Because the devil has been sinning from the beginning, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. This is how we know who is the children of God are and who the children of devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sisters. Hallelujah. Praise God. To destroy the sin, God sent his only begotten son to this world. And when he came to this world, it was not an easy life that Jesus had to face. There was a lot of temptation, a lot of difficulty that Jesus has to go through. And that's why we are here, because of Jesus, right? But when Jesus was starting his ministry, as he got baptized, and he took 40 days of, and 40 nights of fasting, he went into the wilderness and fasted. Even after that, Jesus was tempted, right? Aren't we tempted on a daily basis? We have temptation in our life, and that's why we need Jesus in our life, right? Even the Son of God, Jesus Christ, was tempted by Satan because what happens is when Jesus came aboard, Satan knew he will be facing. He actually disturbed Satan's plans. Jesus came and disturbed Satan's plan, which was death for us, eternal death, right? Right? Who gave us eternal life? Jesus Christ gave us eternal life. So Satan's plan was to destroy Jesus Christ and the plan God has for his children. God's plans for his children was to send Jesus Christ here to show them the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? 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 And Satan wanted to destroy that plan and wanted to tempt Jesus Christ and make him away from the presence of God. Praise God. What was the temptations? He was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. What happened when we don't eat a meal? We get hungry, right? And the next thing that we see, and if we, we want to eat that. This is 40 days and 40 nights. He was hungry. He was fasting. And he asked Jesus Christ to turn this stone into bread. Because of his hunger. He said, turn the stone into, um, stone into bread. And Jesus said, no, I'm not doing that. It was the next temptation that was given to him. He took him to the top of the temple and said, jump off this temple and the angels of God will save you, will cause no harm to you. You are the son of God, so you will not be harmed. Jesus said, no, right? If you turn to Matthew chapter 4, it says from 1 to 11, the temptation of Jesus Christ, you could review it. Then after that, what did he do? What did he told him to do? Bow down and worship me, and I will give you everything in front of your eyes. Everything will be yours. And what will we do in that situation? What will we do in that situation? Mr. Walter, if you say you could have all this, what would be your choice? You might want to grab that, right? You will be the king. You will be the king of this world. You have control of everything. And that is the difference between child of God, hallelujah, uh, which is Jesus Christ, the only begotten son. He said, no, that is not my purpose. I have a purpose why I came this world. My father has a purpose for me, and I will fulfill that, all this temptation that I will be facing. I will deny it. I will not, hallelujah, concede to it, but I will overcome the power of the devil, and I will rise above that, and I will fulfill my purpose. 
And that's why today is Easter Sunday. Hallelujah. Why? Jesus has passed his test of temptation and started his ministry and some of the miraculous works that he did. What are some of the miraculous works he did? He turned water into wine. He did healing. He drive the, hallelujah, he drive out evil spirit. He healed the sick, hallelujah, cleansed the man from leprosy, brings, hallelujah, dead back to life, hallelujah. He healed the deaf and the dumb, hallelujah. He healed the blind, Hallelujah, the deaf and the hallelujah dumb start hearing and talking and stuff. And also, Brother Kenneth spoke about this, Philip Thomas Jr. Spoke about this a while back, about the bleeding woman. And this is also was described yesterday as our meeting took place. That's why it's few of our youth are laughing because they were also, I was with them over there. And this was explaining, explained there as well, part of the sermon. This bleeding woman had the faith to touch the garment of Jesus Christ and had the faith which said you will be, she will be healed if you touch the garment of the Jesus Christ. And where did it touch? What was the touching, Jazzy? The hem, the fridge of the garment, which is the lowest part of the garment. Whereas usually when they were walking in the wilderness and everything else in the muddy areas, the rocks and everything else, it gets dirty and filthy, right? But the pastor explained yesterday, the woman with the bleeding situation, which was over 12 years, was very filthy, right? But she had the faith where she believed if she be able to get close enough, imagine that in a community, right, where you have People that is sick and you don't want to be close to them, you think it's contagious and you, are, you think they are filthy and you do not want to be associated with them. Usually when you know that crowd and when you go into the crowd, they walk away from you. They might uh, tell you to get that out of here, right? Get out of here. Don't come close to me. Ew, germ. Ew, right? And the word spreads. What happened? When there's a bad news, when there's things that is not good, the rumors spread and everybody knows about it. If something is good done, rarely people say, hey, by the way, Joel did a great thing, you know, pass it on, you know, congratulate him. Da, 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 da. No, if Joel did a bad thing, that's what? By the way, hey, Lindsay, you know, Joel did this. And that. No, no. The other thing that you know is that Lindsay is going and telling Benjamin, hey, Benjamin, and next thing you know, the whole church knows about what Joel did. You don't hear nothing about what the good things that Joel did. But it's all about what Joel did bad. And guess what? The church is looking at Joel funny. You know, we are accusers. We want to look Joel funny. You old Joel. No? You're a pastor's son, Joel. Huh? Right? This woman's faith. Doesn't matter what the community said about the woman. Kenneth, right? She made a point to get to Jesus Christ because her faith said if she touched the fridge or the hem of that garment, she will be healed. Her faith, her faith drove her there. Did not discourage us, discourage her. But her faith took her close to Jesus Christ and her faith Jesus said, her faith healed you. Your faith will heal you. Praise God. All the miracles that Jesus Christ did. Satan was disturbed by that. And what did Satan want to do? Right? The lady didn't go for her, her collar. His collar. He didn't want to get to Jesus Christ and grab him by the collar. He just wanted to touch the dirtiest part. Because she felt she's even dirtier than that. That faith of just having that dirty part touched and she was delivered as a faith. And Satan noticed all this wonderful thing that Jesus Christ is doing and what does Satan want to do to Jesus Christ? What happened to Jesus Christ? What happened to Jesus Christ? They wanted to kill Jesus Christ, right? Satan wanted to destroy Jesus Christ and that's what happened. Jesus Christ was put on to the cross. Did Jesus Christ do any sin? 
Did he do anything wrong, Pastor Reggie? Did Jesus have any fault in him? Did Jesus have any sin in him? Why did he get crucified? The devil thought he has victory. Choir, come back. I'm not taking much time in this sermon. This is Easter Sunday. All right? It is the Easter Sunday. The devil thought he won. He crucified the Son of God on the cross thinking he has the victory. Many times in our life, we have the same situations where we feel, where we will face different situation in life, many people will try to crucify us. But have the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you abide by Jesus Christ's law, by Jesus Christ's word, and you have faith in Jesus Christ, no weapon formed against you will be prospering. Jesus Christ had a purpose that he needed to fulfill. And all the temptation that came against him, he withstood. And they say, let us knock him down. Let us accuse him. Let us kill him. And they killed Jesus Christ. They put him on that cross. Nail him down, put a spear through his heart, and they thought they received victory. Oh boy, were they wrong! Oh boy, were they wrong! They did not receive victory. On the third day, he rose up. He, hallelujah, came out of the grave and they went back and checked and see if he was there. To their surprise, there was nobody there. Jesus has rose again. We have victory, Christians. Let us rise in the presence of the Lord tonight. We're going to give him the glory and praise that is deserving to our God. Hallelujah. Easter Sunday is here today because our Lord Jesus Christ has rose again. He is not a dead God. He is the living God. Hallelujah. And this morning, hallelujah, church, let me encourage you. Hallelujah. Our God is a living God. Our God is a God who is deserving praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God has a set a path for you. Jesus Christ has set a path for you to follow. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Hallelujah. No victory. Hallelujah. For the death. Hallelujah. Our God has given us a chance to live an everlasting life. Hallelujah. Where, hallelujah, we were supposed to be, hallelujah, mortality in our life. We're supposed to be dead. Hallelujah. But our Christ has given us opportunity to live an everlasting life. Hallelujah. This morning, he is deserving of that praises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to encourage each and every one of you to hallelujah. Take it in your heart and be thankful for the life that Jesus Christ came here, died on that cross. Hallelujah. Think about the struggle that he faces, the beating that he took. Hallelujah. He didn't need to do that, but the love of God. Hallelujah. For each and every one of us, you are unique. Hallelujah. In your own way. And God has love for you. Hallelujah. And God is telling you that I am here for you. I died on the cross for you. Hallelujah. I rose up on the third day for you. I am I am up in by my Father's right hand interceding for you. Hallelujah. And I will be back to take you. Hallelujah. When your home is prepared, I will be back and I will take you with me where you will have eternal life. Hallelujah. And you will be praising and you will have no pain. You will have no sickness. Hallelujah. You will have and to remorse, but to praise our God. Hallelujah. Easter Sunday.
Stop. 
God has robbed the with our God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, let us close our eyes and let us pray. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask hallelujah. Let us close our eyes and let us pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord for giving us this wonderful opportunity to come to your presence this morning to worship you and give you all the glory and honor. Knowing that, Lord Jesus, you died, you paid the price, and you died on that cross for each and every one of us. And we are grateful, and we love you, and we praise you, and we glorify you. And we want to follow your word and abide by your law and abide in you that one day, hallelujah, we will be able to spend 
eternity with you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Let us not be perished in this evil world. Instead of hallelujah, wash each and every one of us with your blood. Hallelujah. Cleanse us, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We are summoning ourselves into your hand. Hallelujah. We know you rose on the third day and you are interceding for each and every one of us. We are accepting you as our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Continue to bless this church, each and every members of this church, O oh Lord. Let them be a light for your kingdom. Hallelujah. Let them be a vessel for your kingdom. Hallelujah. We are submitting each and every one of us. Hallelujah. Mold us the way that you want us to be so that we could be a vessel for the glory of your you, O oh Lord, and for your kingdom this morning. We are summoning, hallelujah, each and every members of our church. Hallelujah. We are summoning this community into your hand. Hallelujah. Let everyone be touched by the love of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As we are departing this afternoon, we ask that your grace be with us. Hallelujah. Throughout the week, let us be a blessing. Hallelujah. For your kingdom. Give us the grace to live and abide by your word, O oh Lord. Once again, we submit ourselves into your hand. Let your will be done. All these things we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise amen. God. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. 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 The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all until Jesus comes and children of God say, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. Go with peace. May the God bless you all. Praise God. I just have a couple of announcements to make.